Hi everyone, thanks for joining us. Today we're gonna to talk about supporting students' willingness and engagement in V-learning activities. My name is Natalie Harvey and I'm one of the special education instructional coaches for District 54. And I'm Carrie Halusek. I'm an instructional program specialist in District 54. Today we're gonna to focus on um, ways that we can support our children at home while they're learning. And before we dive into that, we just want to review the District 54 goals. We want our students to perform in the top 10%. We want to make sure that we close the achievement gap for all students and that we're focusing on the whole child. So today, as we are learning together, we're really going to be focusing on these goals and most specifically on focusing on our whole child, making sure they're um, healthy, safe, engaged, supported, and challenged. Before we dive into some strategies, we're going to think about what could be causing our students or your children at home to have struggles with engaging and being persistent with their v-learning activities. So there um, are a lot of studies and research that shows that anxiety is a major cause or interference for this. When anxiety goes up, actually our working memory starts to go down at the exact same rate. Um, there is a study done that shows we can lose up anywhere from 13 to 20 IQ points in a moment of anxiety. That study was done by McKibben. And we know that any type of behavior is actually a form of communication. So we really need to try to figure out what our children, our students are trying to tell us when we're noticing those signs of behavior. So let's dive into some strategies to help students um, while they're learning at home with you. So the first thing to think about is your V-Learning workspace, which you've already been working on since the beginning of the year. And just some reminders, and maybe from this, you can take an idea or two to adjust your child's learning space at home. We wanna make sure it's distraction free, not an eyesight or ear sight of the TV, making sure that the phone is not nearby, making sure their furniture has like a fitted chair so the feet are able to read the, reach the floor, um, having it be a specific work area, different from another area in the home. So a certain table or lap pad for their school device, having materials nearby, maybe having a printed schedule right next to them as well. Surroundings are another important piece to think about, making sure that it's like behind them is not distracting of our other learners and even themselves. For lighting, we wanna make sure that if the lighting is too dim or too light, this will cause low level energy um, and the student may not be as alert. Also, if a student is not seated in an upright position, that is another thing that would cause a low energy for learning. And if our lighting, it could also be too high. So if it's too bright or there's too um, much stimulation going around, then the student's gonna have too many distractions. So we wanna make sure we're in a space that's not visually distracting as well as there's not a lot of noise around them. You can, I know the teachers are sending um, schedules, maybe weekly or daily. You can have that printed off as well, right by your child's learning space. And this could be a really great tool to even have your child check off as each subject area gets done. So here are some pictures and samples of some V learning spaces we saw online that we thought were really great. Um, the lighting is really nice. It's a designated space for the child. Materials are nearby. There's calendars. Um, you'll notice there's small lamps and plants, just things that will make um, it easier for the student to focus on their learning. So thinking about when your student has that great workspace set up, what will it look like when they're there? Hmm. We know sometimes they might become very overwhelmed and it might seem to you like they're avoiding work. Um, when that happens, oftentimes that's because they're overwhelmed by the content and by what is being asked of them. 
And this happens because the emotional brain takes over and it causes disengagement as a protective strategy kind of that our brains just naturally have. So when our students or your children are trying to initiate a um, an action that's given. This is on task engagement for them. So this is anytime a teacher is kind of asking them a direction or something that they need, needs to be done, that they are able to do what's asked. Sometimes the brain gets in the way and they're not able to do what's asked. It's not necessarily that they're not motivated or they're not trying. Um, we just know that when people feel overwhelmed, there's strategies that our brains do to help us get through at that point. So the student might just be thinking, this is hard, this looks difficult, and that causes them to shut down. So what can we do to catch our students and our children at home before their brain takes over and tries? trying to stop, stop them from working or being motivated to um, learn at home on RV learning activities. So one thing you can do with your children um, is called self-monitoring or rating. So before an assignment happens or an activity happens, ask your child at home, how hard are you thinking right now this is going to be? Okay, rate it on a scale one to five, one being the easiest, five being the hardest. Um, there's a little gray chart that kind of shows you what this can look like. And then after they complete that subject area or assignment, ask, you know, how hard was that really? Rate it again and then compare. And it's really important maybe looking at this last example before they thought it was a four. That's pretty tough, but it ended up being a two. So really reflecting on afterwards how long the activity took and how difficult it actually was and reflecting on why do you think our minds thought it was way harder than it was getting them to do that is called disproving and that will help our brains um, know that hey sometimes things look hard but once you do it they're actually not that bad and if they get in this habit more and more you'll you'll notice you won't have to do this as much with your children so even some of those things like a word problem where um, the they might look at the words and say, oh my goodness, there's so much to do there. But then the teacher does the lesson to help break down what the vocabulary is, ask them to circle um, action words and get them to initiate through that way. Then they can say, wow, this is gonna be a five because look at you know the words that are there and I don't know this vocabulary yet. And then once they've gone through that process, being able to say, okay, that, that wasn't as hard as I thought because I do know that vocabulary now and the teacher has taught a strategy. Yes, exactly. Great example, Carrie. Thank you. All right, so your child is at home and they're about to get on Zoom live with their teacher. What, what can we do to help? So initiation is that first step of the, the challenge sometimes for our students, just getting them started. So here are some things you can do to help with that initiation piece. Preview their schedule for the day together, which by now you um, probably have a good routine down for what their days look like and you know their schedules, but still every day it's really important and things do change. Um, so having the student be aware of that ahead of time. If it's, um, let's say, uh, literacy time and they have slides pushed out to them on Seesaw or Google Slides that they have to complete on their own, going through with them, okay, let's see how many slides you have today. There's seven slides. I'm going to get seven post-its out. As you're working, here are your seven post-its that for each slide they can check off as they get through each slide right on the post-it note so they're physically and visually able to see how much more is left instead of the unknown of how many more clicks they have as they're going through that activity prepared for them. And isn't that great? Aren't those the skills that we use as adults too is our little check boxes and our sticky notes and knowing I've done that and it's over. Um, I think like all those strategies that we can teach kids now will help them to become better with their executive functioning and planning and organization for work. Yes, definitely. And getting them started is really important. So 
staying near them if you're able to and say, okay, let's get started on this first problem together, or the first slide together, just to get that momentum going and then slowly kind of walk away. And hopefully they, they won't even notice that you're leaving and you've left them feeling confident and started that they can just continue. Um, and that goes into the next bullet point of saying the word continue versus start. It's easier on our minds and brains. Starting feels like, oh no, I have no idea where to go. But if you say continue, oh, I've got this. I can totally continue what's been started. It'll just go eat over easier with your child. Um, there's some visuals here on the side. So the top card is a green working for card that you can use at home with your student. So this, you can have a sample like this one done. Um, teachers, if you want something like this, your classroom teacher can help get that at home for you. Or you can do this on a post-it note, a sticky note as well, and not have you know, all the visuals on there. But at the top, it says, I am working for. So the student would pick what they would want ahead of time, what they would want to work for. There's visuals that show what they have to do, do my work, use my words, and listen. And then there's smiley faces on the bottom that show each time you're noticing they're doing one of those things. If they're doing their work, you can give them a smiley face in the box above. They're using their words, give them another smiley face if they're listening, et cetera. By the time it's filled in, then they would be able to do that reward, whatever they chose to work for. It'd be really great if you have your child think of ideas of what they would like to work for. Um, it could be an extra I spy game or word search. Maybe it's a special book they like to read or color a book, anything that they would like additional to work for outside of those school activities that you're doing with them. And um, you also want to, when you start using these working for cards, start them like a little bit more frequently. Um, so the students are really able to see, oh, I'm able to get this reward. I'm able to get what I'm working for more quickly, build their stamina up, and then you can make those cards last a little bit longer as they get better at them and they see that positive reinforcement coming through quickly. And that that is really uh, child dependent. So, you know, if they are working on writing letters, and they have a, a high aversion to writing tasks. As soon as they pick up that pencil, it can be that they get a token because they are starting their task by having the correct materials. And it might need that they need more reinforcement um, to keep going and that helps to refocus your child. So talking to the school um, and giving them feedback on what you see, what they see to figure out what's a good balance um, and a goal to move towards. Yes, definitely. Another card right below is orange and it's a first then. So this one's a little bit simpler for you to create at home on any piece of paper. And it's a really um, kind of quick moving consistent reward for your students. So if they need this at any time of the day, you're gonna say first, we're going to complete two math problems. Then you're going to get to do um, one of your Mad Libs in your book or a crossword puzzle or a word search, whatever it is that they would like to do for a couple minutes after they complete those problems. This can be done at each subject area. This can be done multiple times in a math session if maybe the math time is the hardest. Um, this can really be used as you need it with your child. And it's really nice because you could even just draw a picture of what they need to do first and then a picture of what they earn after. And it can be done on any kind of paper sticky note that you have at home. Um, the last one, so you see math problems at the bottom. So something you can do is you can help them chunk their assignments, which means breaking it into smaller parts, which I know as an adult, we do as well in our work days. So grabbing a post-it note and putting it over half of the problems. All right, I want you to do this half right now, focus on that. And then we could talk um, about focusing on the second half after, and maybe even moving the post-it note over, covering up the completed one. So then they're only Seeing half the problems really helps. You could also just fold the paper in half. That's another option. Um, but this just really helps them see only a small portion they have to do, and it makes it more manageable. Just know and 
even though we're in V learning right now and we don't know how much longer it's going to be, these strategies on here for initiation can be used anytime at even like at, on homework, right? At after school with your kids or reading at night, these can be used. So keep that in mind as you're continuing to support your children at home in their learning. So now we've gotten them started, right? We've done great in the initiation. Now they're working. What do we do now? So thinking of our turtles up here and how they're gonna keep moving up, 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 we don't want them to feel like they're not gonna make it. We want the persistence to be there by um, praising it. So we really wanna make sure that you're praising anytime you notice your students are working, staying focused and giving their best effort instead of the actual product, instead of it being correct or complete. Encourage that self-monitoring as well. You're noticing that your students keeping track of how much they've done. Maybe they're using the strategy of checking off post-it notes. Um, encourage that and <clears throat> It's gonna help them persist. Make a plan with your student if there is um, a writing prompt or something that's given that looks a little bit difficult with your child, tell them, hey, skip the ones that look really hard and start with the easy ones. Cause again, that's gonna build on that momentum. Once they get going on the easy ones, they're gonna be ready to tackle those more difficult ones. Um, you could tell your child, all right, let's do two more problems, then we'll pause on this section of our day using that word pause instead of stop is another one that's just better on our brains and minds for our kids thinking, oh man, I have to stop at the end of this. They're automatically thinking they have to finish everything and they're going to panic. But if you say we're going to pause, then that they, they know, oh, I'm just pausing. I have time to do this later. And Natalie, yes. I think another important part of that um, strategy is that often we'll say five more minutes or 10 more minutes. And some students don't have good concept of time mm -hmm. and how long that will take. And so if you give them two more problems, then that they can make sense of that a lot better. So two more problems and then we'll pause seems more manageable to them because they think that five minutes is an hour long. They have no um, idea. <laughs> yeah, so and certainly like we have visual timers that we sometimes use, um, but yeah. it is it does help break it down for them by just telling them two more problems, three more problems or whatever we finished covered up with the post-it note look, we have this side and then we'll pause. Yeah. Yes. And then even this last bullet does talk about a timer. And I was going to think those sand or visual timers are really great. Letting them know here's the sand timer. They're able to visually see how much is gone and what's left. Having it there can help keep them engaged for that time. And then consistently providing positive praise for your students for anything you see them doing that is good, right? Letting them know you're noticing, hey, great job just um, working through that page of reading. Great job using your um, most creative words on your story. Any little thing that you're noticing, making sure you're letting your child know is going to help in them being persistent on their tasks. Okay, so we've talked about initiation. We've talked about persistence. We've talked about the environment. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about mindset just because this is a way of thinking how people think or what people think of their abilities. And if you have a growth mindset, you're more likely to take on challenging tasks and persist. Um, if you have a fixed mindset, you kind of think, oh, I just might, must not be good at that. And that's kind of where the learning process can stop. So it's very important that when we're talking to our kids and I am a mother of two as Natalie is also a mother. We we want to instill with them or in them things that are going to help them throughout their life and not just with a V learning task. <laughs> and so thinking about the growth mindset, we put this video in here. It's from Josh Spencer. Um, although the concept is based on Carol Dweck and he's going to talk about that, we do have reference in the back which you'll be able to see, so you could pull it up to watch again at a later time. But this is an important uh, way to talk to your child so that um, they develop the, 
the ability to take on a task and know that just because you don't know it now doesn't mean you won't know it. So mm -hmm. if you could play that clip, Natalie. Yes, here we go. Just a short about two minutes. Researcher and professor Carol Dweck uses the term mindset to describe the way people think about ability and talent. Dweck delineates between two different mindsets that exist on a continuum. The first is the fixed mindset, which suggests that your abilities are innate and unchangeable. The second is a growth mindset, which views it as something you can improve through practice. In a fixed mindset, you view failure as permanent, but with the growth mindset, you see failure as a chance to learn and even pivot. Those with a fixed mindset are more likely to view critical feedback as a personal attack, while those with a growth mindset will see it as a chance to improve, where they can develop new systems. With a fixed mindset, you're more likely to choose easier tasks and put in minimal effort. After all, if talent is fixed, why bother improving? I even try. But with the growth mindset, you're more likely to embrace challenging tasks and work hard to improve. Those with a fixed mindset are likely to give up when they face an obstacle. Meanwhile, those with a growth mindset will view obstacles as a chance to experiment and solve problems. In a fixed mindset, the focus is on measurable accomplishments. But with a growth mindset, the focus is more on a journey of continual improvement. With a fixed mindset, you're less likely to take creative risks. But with a growth mindset, creative risks are simply a way to innovate and improve. Ultimately, your mindset influences everything from creative risk taking to how you do feedback to whether or not you finish difficult tasks. And in the end, it's one of the greatest factors in determining whether or not you grow and improve in your abilities. Thank you. Oops. Oh. I don't know if you want to move forward or not. <laughs> not yet. Okay. Um, so certainly looking to see what kind of words your child is using um, to see if they are they do have a fixed mindset or if they have a growth mindset. To try and support your child along the way, you can start with something small because we know that we're all resistant to change, but luckily this is something that can be changed. Um, looking at what is something, a task that's really difficult for your child. One that is often difficult for a lot of children is writing just because it involves so many steps. Um, so trying to pair something pleasant with that. So if you have a, a favorite, um, something that grandma made, uh, a blanket, a throw, or a pillow, letting your child have that during a writing session or um, letting them sit in your chair to um, do the writing task, something that's special, something that they like, so that instead of, oh no, it's writing, it's yay, it's writing, I get to do this. Um, and so then you're helping to support at least their, their mindset in the meantime until we're kind of helping to reset that. Uh, there is a video at the bottom you see, we're not gonna play today, but this is Growth Mindset for students. And you can grab that um, at Growth Mindset uh, for Kids. It's made by Class Dojo and it's on YouTube. And that, that is a video that is targeted for students in the same way that we just watched that fixed and growth mindset. So you might wanna go back and take a look at that with your child. Um, and so we, have, we do have one more slide and then we're gonna pause um, so that we can split this presentation into two parts. So if you need to take a break that you can do that. And then there is a second part of the presentation. And I wanted to say those videos for the students, there's a couple episodes in there too. Um, so you can kind of watch maybe one episode a week with your kids to really get them to understand that concept of growth mindset. Awesome. So sometimes as the adults, it is also hard to change what we say. So we're asking you to change from, you know, stop to pause, start to continue, 
but we have a trick for you on, on mindset. So if your student or your child is saying something, or even if you say something and you're modeling this for them, add the word yet at the end and all is saved. So I can't do this yet. I don't understand this and you can chime in yet. Mm -hmm. um, and if you, you're saying something, this doesn't make any sense as we're trying to put together the crazy directions that we get from our Amazon box um, yet. You know, so showing that uh, that you don't need to know everything at one time, that learning is a process, that you do get through it with persistence. So this um, is where we're going to stop the presentation right now. We've talked about initiation. We've talked about persistence, looking at growth mindset and helping support your, your child through those types of words. Um, you can print this growth mindset or take a picture with your phone mm -hmm. and have that by their workspace to help your students start to express uh, growth mindset words instead of I can't do it, I'm still learning instead of it's not good enough, is this the best I can do? And we do this in the classrooms as well. So some students may already be expressing themselves in this way. Um, but they might need extra help to do that. And you can even use a working for card for that. If mm -hmm. this is your child has um, a fixed mindset or your child has some low self-esteem or they just tend to tell you these things because they're more comfortable, you can target that. Every time I hear you uh, say that, you know, you, you can do it or um, you add a yet when you accidentally say something that's fixed, you can reward it with the token and then you could fill up your growth mindset card uh, for for some type of reward and why we really want those to be like internal motivations like you did it you can if um if that's something that your child is used to do an external motivator which would be something like you get to choose the dinner or um you get this toy, uh, a larger type of reward. I would just caution you to not do that all of the time because we do want motivation to be internalized because I know that it makes me feel good. That's why I'm doing it. It's not because I'm getting a toy. Um, but if your child is used to that and you can work up to that, that would be a suggestion. Um, really work on that mindset. So we're going to pause, Natalie. I don't know if you have anything to add to this section. And when we come back, we are going to talk about um, how then your student, your, your child gets help if they need it mm -hmm. once they're already in a task. Sounds great. Thanks so much. See you guys in a minute. <laughs> 